have to see, see you in the back. Okay. Hey, Coach. How are you? I'm like, I'm like, can, can I give you this? No, you do whatever you like. I hear you. Yeah. Give it to you. Oh, now you got all this paper over there. Okay, good afternoon again, everybody. Welcome back to our press conferences for the Bridgeport Regional. We'll begin our session with Oregon. A uh, couple of uh, quick reminders here. Uh, no cell phones, or cell phones should be uh, on silent or vibrate. No flash photography. Um, there is no uh, live social media. Uh, we do have uh, the press conference will be available on an FTP site. Uh, and you can see our friends from Hammond uh, for, that, uh, for that information. We'll start with a uh, question and answer period with Oregon head coach uh, Kelly Graves, and then we'll uh, have some Oregon student athletes uh, on, up here on the podium. And uh, while this is going on, the Oregon locker room will be open. So we'll start with questions <laughs> for uh, Coach Graves. We'll start with Doug here in the middle. Hey, Coach, Doug Farmer, DAP. Just talk for a second about the freshmen in this tournament. I mean, you have your own, and Sabrina is unbelievable. Mellon has one in Destiny. Just the freshman point guards are the best I can remember in a long time across the board, it seems. Uh, agreed. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, I don't know all of them. Uh, Destiny, of course, I'm very familiar with uh, because over the last three or four days, I've seen a lot of film on her. Very, very impressive. Plus, she's uh, a West Coast kid, so I had a chance to watch her in, in high school as well. Um, I can mainly just speak to these three. It's incredible what they've done. Um, you know, not, not too many teams are going to go this far relying so much on freshmen. And we really don't, didn't have much experience uh, with the rest of the team. I think coming into the season, we had six years of duck experience. So it's not like we had a, a, a Walker Kimbrough and, uh, and a Jones who you know, can help those, those two freshmen that they have. Uh, we kind of went into this thing sight unseen. But, uh, but been very impressed with their professionalism each and every day, uh, their, their coachability, and um, you know, just their, their effort. They, they play really hard. Ryan Thorburn with the Register Guard. Kelly, how has the team responded the last couple of days to all the travel and the finals being done and really focused in on Maryland and, and what they do? Well, they've handled it, I think, a lot better than their coach. I've got a cold, <laughs> and uh, that's, that's a lot of travel. But they're 18 to 21-year-olds, and uh, I think they've handled it well. You know, two, uh, two cross-country trips in the, the matter of five or six days, I think, would, would take its toll on anybody. Um, add to that two days of finals in between. And, uh, you know, it's understandable that, that, that they might be tired, but we're certainly not going to use that as an excuse by any means. Um, and, and I think that, you know, come tomorrow at tip-off, we're going we're gonna to be ready. Scott in the corner back there. Uh, Scott at Erickson, Hearst Newspaper. Uh, was there a moment in the season where you saw the freshmen coming together or, or a game where, where you kind of said, okay, they're starting to, to get this and this could be a special group? Well, I think early on we had a game against Michigan State where we just kind of put it all together, you know, one by 30 some something points. And in that game, I think the freshmen really shined. Uh, but that was early, so we didn't really at that time even know what we had. I thought it kind of started to come together when Sabrina came back from an injury. She missed about a month. We lost three games during that, or four games actually, during that stretch. And, um, you know, we, we made a kind of a miracle comeback at Cal. Uh, they were ranked at the time. Uh, Ruthie made a tremendous defensive play uh, that led to a basket, which gave us a chance then to have Sabrina's basket at the end. Uh, Mallory played really well that weekend. So I think that was the kind of the weekend that, that we figured, hey, you know, we can do this. I know we're young, but, but we can play. And uh, I think from, from then on, we actually played really, really well the rest of Pac-12 play. So I, I would say maybe the Cal game. Erica? Yes, hi, Coach uh, hi. Eric Ayala with Double G Sports. Can you talk a little bit about coming out of the Pac-12 conference and what you think that has done for your young team coming into the NCAA tournament? Well, they had to grow up fast because it's such a competitive league, as is evident by five teams in the Sweet 16. Um, you know, we were we were joking. I don't think there's a – well, in fact, I know there's not a team in the tournament that uh, has played more teams in the one and two seed lines. I mean – we played seven games against teams on those seed lines. Uh, and, and so 
you know, we've kind of seen a little bit of everything. We've seen teams in our conference that have athleticism, others that have size, others that have quickness, some really offensive-oriented teams, and some great defensive teams. So we've seen a little bit of everything when you run that, run that gauntlet. And so they had to grow up fast. And, uh, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, playing in the Pac-12 has, I think, prepared us for this moment, no doubt. Kelly, uh, Jonathan Hawthorne with the, the Emerald and Eugene. Um, you were saying kind of in Eugene how they Maryland's kind of played with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. Um, have you seen that in film over the last couple of games that you've broken down? And I guess could you just kind of describe how that chip has come to fruition? Yeah, well, chip or no chip, they're really good. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whatever they need to, to, to be motivated, I think only adds to what they already have. I mean, they are a great team. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not baffled, but it, it's – you wonder why they were a three seed with their resume. It's incredible uh, who they've played, who they've beaten. Uh, the only two teams they lost to are still playing, one of whom is considered the best team, you know, in the country. So uh, they're just they're just really good. And the more you watch them, the more you realize that, uh, you know, we've got a work cut out for us. You know, they really don't have many holes. Certainly offensively, they have no holes. But, um, you know, you know we, we, we've still got to play the game. We're going to find them. You know we're gonna we're gonna do what we can to to counteract what where they're good and and uh, so we're up and ready for the challenge, no doubt. Go with Doug and then Howard. Kelly, I know you left Gonzaga because you want to be the football school that Oregon has now, but it seems that you and the men's program turns into a basketball school the way that you're both advancing in the NCAA tournament. Any thoughts on how this may become a basketball school at Oregon as opposed to the football school it's been for so many years? Well, I might make people angry if I say it's a basketball school because uh, football is a big, big deal there. But uh, yeah, it's it's incredible the success that our men have had. You know, and they're great. I, I love the staff. I mean, they're they're so um, uh, open to you know helping my staff and and us and working with us. Uh, the the young men they have on their team are incredible. Uh, good friends with our team. I think uh, there's really good synergy between the two programs. Uh, and, you know, we've, we've had some of our biggest thrills on this trip. Actually, one of our biggest thrills, okay, our two games were better. But the third best part of the, the last trip was, you know, we all got a chance to, uh, uh, to go to a sports bar together, have dinner, and watch, uh, and watch our men win. So uh, pretty neat. And then last night, of course, we sat around and watched that too. So we all cheer for each other. I think it just goes to show you the commitment that Oregon has to athletics. I mean, it's incredible. Um, you know, you look up and down, and I would say we're a track and field school, if you want to know the truth. Uh, cross country, I mean, there, there's not a sport that we don't excel at. And, and I think as a student athlete, it's pretty neat that they get to rub shoulders with some of the, uh, the elite athletes in the, in the country. Uh, Howard. Kelly, Howard Magdalene, New York Times. Um, it seems like a lot of the things that you guys do well are things that Maryland does well. You know, Ruthie and Bree have similar offensive games. You know, Sabrina um, matches up pretty well with Destiny. And in terms of the three-point shooting of Lexi and, uh, and Shatori, d do you see it that way? Do you see the two as parallel teams? And do you think, if so, that uh, helps or hurts you a little bit going into tomorrow? Well, I don't know if it'll help or hurt. We'll find that out soon enough. Um, yeah, I guess we do mirror ourselves. We just don't play at the fast pace they do. We don't push it as much as they do in transition. I think we're capable, um, but I think early in the year we tried to do that, and we had basketballs going off walls and into, you know, our, our poor fans' you know, faces and hands. Uh, we were just weren't able to play at that pace, so we've, we've kind of dialed it back a little bit, become a, a little bit more half-court oriented. Um, but I think potentially, yeah, we, you know, this is a team that can get out and go. Um, I just think what's important in this game, we've got to somehow limit the number of possessions. I mean, if we, if we play this game in the 90s tomorrow, you know, we're, we're probably in trouble. If we can keep it between 75 and 80, okay, now that's a different story. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I guess when you look at it that way, we do mirror each other in a, in a lot of different ways. We're just not as experienced. You know, Jones, watching her on, on, on film is very impressive. I'm not sure we've seen a better post player all year. I mean, it's incredible. Her positioning, her patience, balance, uh, strength. I mean, she, she's the whole package in there. I, I'm assuming she's going to have a heck of a pro career. Go there, Gene. Hey, Kelly, Gene Wong with the Washington Post. Um, when you're game planning against 
a team like Maryland that has such strong senior leadership, is there anything you can do to kind of counteract that? Because they've seen it all, they've been to Final Fours. I mean, can you do anything to kind of counteract that experience? Not really. You know, this, this moment obviously is not going to be too big. I'm hoping it's not too big for these guys. I don't think it will be because they don't know any better. I mean, they, they've only been to one NCAA tournament and they've won two games. You know, they've never lost. So, um, but yeah, I, there's no substitute for experience. And, uh, and to have two great leaders as well as great players, that those two are, I think, can only um, be a benefit for them. Plus, they have a championship uh, coach. You know, so um, she, she's got that pedigree. So they have a lot going for them in, in that experience. We'll get a mic to Howard in the front here, please. Kelly, just to jump off what you're talking about in terms of pace, you, you guys did slow it down significantly and seemed to happen after you uh, had the own three start in Pac-12 play. Was that the key, you think, uh, to finding it? And if not, what, you know, what if what other factors did play a part in going from that team to the team you are now? Well, I think getting Sabrina back helped, you know, um, just gave us another ball handler. You know, we, we don't have a, a, a ton of playmakers, so we have to do it kind of the old fashioned way through ball screens, through patience, through ball movement, through spacing, those kind of things. And I think it was just natural progression. I think when you have and rely on so many young kids like we do, they always play faster than they should. You know, I'm sure Brianna was did not play the way she's playing now as a freshman. You try to do too, things too fast. And I uh, encouraged Ruthie to, to watch her and learn from, from how she's playing the game because I think Ruthie's going to have that same kind of ability later on. No, I think we're just slowing things down just as the, the natural uh, evolution of a basketball team with young kids. You just play faster early. And, uh, and they're, they're just getting, we're getting better. I say they, we're, we are just getting better offensively. Doug. Kelly, I know you're focused on tomorrow, but it came out yesterday that you might have a team in the three-on-three -three tournament for USA Basketball with some of your freshmen. Just, I know you're a big USA Basketball guy and yeah. such. How neat is that potentially you could have three Ducks playing together for this three-on-three -three tournament? And are you going to coach them as the uh, coach of the Duck team for the, the USA Basketball tournament? I am not going to coach the team. I'm going to probably go on a little vacation for the weekend with my family because I don't see them as often as I, I would like this time of year. But, uh, no, they'll, they'll be in good hands. Uh, Sabrina can coach them. She's fine. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's just a great opportunity. And I don't know where we're headed with three-on-three. Three. My guess is that the NCAA has added uh, sand volleyball. Um, maybe there's a point here in the near future where we add three on three basketball as a sport. Maybe uh, I think we're headed that way in the Olympics as well. So I just think it's a great opportunity. There's uh, I think six or seven Pac-12 schools that are sending teams there. I think we're the only conference that maybe USA Basketball reached out to uh, carte blanche, say anybody that wants to send a team. So, hey, sign me up. Any, any chance they have to play more basketball and compete, I think the better. Seems like uh, Audie's had a had a big role for you guys so far in the tournament. I mean, what kind of element does she kind of give you guys off the bench that um, that just kind of helps to give you guys a little bit of a punch? Yeah, uh, she's versatile. You know, Audie's just a versatile player. Can guard guards. She can guard big kids. She's uh, excellent on the offensive boards. Uh, she's given us a little different game at the high post. So when we go with her at the high post instead of Mallory, Mallory's got that nice mid range jump shot. And Audie. Uh, can attack the basket a little bit more from there. So it gives us a different look. Uh, just energy, you know, she's, uh, she's a fun-loving kid, and she, um, you know, kind of keeps, keeps the team loose and, and uh, works her butt off. So there are a lot of different areas she's helping us. All right. Kelly, with uh, UConn buying up all the tickets for this event, I mean, if you guys are able to keep it close against Maryland late, are you kind of hoping the crowd will – Root for the 10 seed. Yeah, well, I know our fan base is really ticked off because they couldn't make the trip cross country. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, generally we cheer for underdogs, and, and my guess is we're considered quite an underdog. So, you know, if that uh, comes to fruition, maybe that happens. I don't know. And I don't think, I think our, our team has shown with wins in some, some big places this year on the road. I don't think the crowd matters that much to them. Yeah, I don't think they really play to that or, or focus on it. But we could sure use the support. So if the UConn fans do want to cheer for green and yellow, that's fine. I'll take it. We have one more question for Coach. 
defensively, was the Duke game one of your better games? And, and is it going to take that level of performance and, and maybe even above that to beat Maryland? Yeah, yeah. We, we I thought, played here. We're going to need to play there defensively uh, in this next game. But, you know, again, we talk about players evolving, a young team evolving, and defense is usually the thing that takes the longest. You know, that's a program, that's a culture uh, that, that you have to build to play great team defense. And we're just starting to get it a little better. You know, we're, we're playing to a scout better. Uh, our fundamentals are better. Uh, the team concept, the understanding of how to play within a team defensively is getting better. Just, you know, the natural evolution of things. So as good as we were there, though, we, we got to be a lot better. You know, this is a, well, as a coach, it's going to be fun to watch. These are two of the best offensive teams in the country that we have a chance to, to watch this, this weekend in UConn and Maryland. So I'll be taking some notes as well. One more. We've got time for one more. Howard. Coach, it's specific to your offensive attack and, and the role that Lexi has played, um, both the big shots she's had, but simply the fact that you talked about limited possessions and efficiency, how effective she's been from three-point range and how important that has been. Yeah. Well, you know, she, she's a great shooter, no, no doubt about it, but she never takes a bad shot. So, um, you know, and she's got some, some kids around her that, you know, she's got a good inside attack that teams have to, to play for. So she's a beneficiary of maybe some extra help or some double teams inside. Uh, we're a good passing team. We like to make the extra pass. And so uh, that helps somebody like her. Uh, but she's actually become better at creating her own shot. She can actually now, you know, penetrate a little bit. So it keeps them a little more honest. Uh, so she, you know, she's getting better in, in her own game. But uh, no, I think, and even when teams try to take her out, it spreads the floor a lot more for the other four to, to make things happen. So she's, just having her out there is, is always a benefit. Whether she's making them or not, they have to play her for, for the shot. Okay, Coach, thanks for joining us today. All right, today. thank you. We'll have the Oregon student athletes up in about five minutes or so. I told them they had to use three and four syllable words. <laughs> They're young.
Okay, we have our Oregon student athletes joining us today here on the podium. We're happy to welcome Sabrina Ionescu, Ruthie Hebert, and Mallory McGuire. And we also, for the media, want to welcome to Connecticut the Oregon SID Joe Waltasti. So we'll start with, uh, with questions for student athletes. If you could give your name and your affiliation and uh, direct a question to a student athlete. Uh, Ryan Thorburn with the Register Guard. Sabrina, how well do you know their point guard, Destiny, and, and what challenges do their guards present you guys? Um, I played with Destiny, Slocum, and Kalia um, Charles, so they're um, post player as well. Um, we, played, we played together um, at the McDonald's game, and you know she's a great point guard. Um, but I don't think it'll cause us too much um, trouble. We play against you know great guards in the Pac-12, so I think we're going to be ready tomorrow. Doug? Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. For all three of you, just talk about the run you guys have been on. Coach has said you're playing with house money, and you don't know any better. You just keep on playing basketball. But what's it been like to play in your first NCAA tournament and to be undefeated so far? Sabrina, why don't, just for our transcribers, uh, Sabrina, why don't you take that first, and you can go. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're the underdogs. I think we've been we've been that all year, especially having um, you know six freshmen on the team, and we're playing with nothing to lose. I mean, I think we've been saying that. Um, I coach has been saying that all year and a team with nothing to lose is a team, you know, that's going to be tough to beat. Um, so I think, you know, we come out, we play, we play every game like it's going to be our last because we never do know when it's going to be, you know, our last game this season. And that's definitely something that, you know, I tell the team all the time, you know, you got to do everything um, the best you can because you never know, you know, when the ball is going to stop bouncing. Um, so we come in every day, we, we, we play hard and, and I think we're peaking at the right time. Um, so we're going to come out tomorrow and we're going to give it everything we have and see where that takes us. Ruthie, why don't you answer that question too? Um, it's been an amazing exper experience. And like Sabrina said, there's nothing to lose. So it's really fun to just go out and give your all. And know at the end of the day, when you give your all, um, you can't be disappointed in that. Mallory, do you have thoughts? Um, I have to agree with both of what they said. Um, we have to give it our all, and we are the underdogs. But um, like Sabrina said, um, the underdogs are the ones that nobody like expects to win. So um, we're the team that everybody fears a little bit more. Erica? Uh, Erica Ayala with Double G Sports and the Female Coaching Network. Ladies, a lot has been made of the six freshmen, the youth of your team, but if you had to describe Oregon women's basketball, what would you use to describe how your team has played this season? Ruthie, why don't you go first? Um, I know we have a lot of freshmen, but I think it's just we play with a lot of heart. We play for each other, and that's definitely what's got us this far. Sabrina? Um, I think something – Probably one word that would describe us is like relationships. I think, especially having six freshmen, you know, we came in, we had to get to know each other quickly and get to know the upperclassmen quickly. And um, our coaches, you know, we had to get to know them through our recruiting process. So I think definitely the relationship aspect of this team outside of basketball has helped us, you know, mold together on the court and play for um, someone other than ourselves. Mallory? They, they both covered that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ruthie, this is Jonathan Hawthorne with the, the Daily Emerald in Eugene. I'm wondering, Kelly Graves is saying, um, you know, that uh, he's been telling you to look at Bree Jones a little bit and just kind of see as a player you might be able to play at her level, you know, maybe when you become an upperclassman. What is what is it like just seeing her on film? And, you know, is that kind of one of your goals is to play at that level? Um, yeah, she's definitely a great basketball player. Um, her composure and her able to finish around the rim is really um, motivating. And I'm really excited to play against her tomorrow. Doug? For all three of you guys, I mean, people like us make a big deal about the cross-country travel and the early start time tomorrow, but as Coach said, you're 18 to 21-year-old kids. It makes no difference. You don't you just play basketball. Does it matter that you're playing early, and does it matter that you've flown back and forth twice in a week? Um, Mallory, why don't we start with yeah. – Oh, so, Mallory, yep. <laughs> well, well, we'll mix the order up a little bit. Um, well, I mean, we, I mean, we did fly back home to Eugene for two days, but um, I honestly – personally, I don't think I got used to the – back to the West Coast time because I was already adjusted to the East Coast time. But um, travel shouldn't really be a factor in the way that we play. Um, I know it is difficult, but um, I think we'll be fine tomorrow morning getting up early and being able to play. Ruthie, you want to take a shot that one too? Uh, yeah, like Mallory, I, um, I'm not really used to the West Coast time again. So we're just I think we'll be ready to play. Howard in the front here. Hi, uh, Sabrina, Howard Mendel, New York Times. 
It seems like you have relished taking the big shot. You've had a number of them. And I'm wondering how long that's been the case for you and uh, whether you see the NCAA tournament as an opportunity to do that once again uh, in, a big, in a big spot. Um, I, I've never really taken you know, game-winning shots prior to my freshman year coming in um, here at Oregon. But I think just the competitive, competitiveness in me um, always wants the ball in my hands at that crunch time. Um, and I think my teammates, you know, believe in me to make game winning, um, game winning shots. So I think that's what it is. Cause I've never really practiced game winning shots prior to this. I mean, I dream about it all the time and, and whatnot. Um, yeah. Scott in the back. As freshmen, was there a moment, uh, that you can point to where you guys felt like you were starting to come together and could be part of something special? Ruthie, why don't you start? Um, I, I always knew we were going to be something special just with um, the recruiting class and everything. I think the four games in Spain really helped us out and we kind of clicked from the start and definitely just the preseason really helped us mesh together and it went from there. Sabrina? Um, yeah, I agree with Ruthie. I think that Spain trip really helped us um, as a young team. We had the 10 practices um, you know, earlier than most people that weren't able to go on a trip. Um, so I think that definitely helped us, you know, form relationships and and start. And um, of course, the first, you know, few practices of the season weren't, you know, great for us. You know, we weren't used to each other. It was pretty much a brand new team. But, you know, coach always told us to stick together and continue doing what we've been doing. So, you know, it pays off now. We know each other. We know we know each other really well on and off the court. So I think that def definitely helps us this late into March. Mallory? Um, agreeing with both of them, just the Spain trip, I think that really was like the building block in what made is going to make this team so great. That was just um, a good experience overall and um, made us all come closer as a team. Right out here. Uh, this is Jonathan Stow with KEZI 9 News and Eugene. Um, for all three of you, obviously it's the first time that Oregon has been in the Sweet 16. How are you tr sort of balancing having fun during this experience and you know sort of taking that all in, but also realizing that you have a goal to after this weekend to get to the Final Four? Sabrina, why don't you take that first? Um, you know, I think we're just enjoying the moment and living in the moment. You know, this is never going to come, you know, we're never going to be able to relive this moment again as freshmen. Um, but I definitely think it gives us a taste for the next years to, you know, the, the following years. Um, you know, we're excited for next year and the year after that, especially as a young team. But um, we definitely want to continue just coming out and, you know, giving it everything we have on, on the court and just enjoying the experience. Ruthie? It's just really exciting. Um, I think we're just going to keep playing hard and see how far that takes us. And whatever happens, I think we're going to be really proud of ourselves, and we should be. Mallory? Um, the experience is amazing overall. Um, it's just an honor to just be um, make it this far in the Sweet 16, but I know we all have been working super hard to get here. So um, just all the hard work we've been putting as, in has paid off. And we'll go with Doug, and then we'll go with Howard. Uh, for Sabrina and Ruthie, I know you're focused on tomorrow, but it came out yesterday that you guys are potentially playing the USA Basketball 3-on-3 three -three tournament in a couple of weeks. Coach said that, Sabrina, you'd be the one coaching the team because he was going on vacation <laughs> with his family. But just talk about that for a second. I mean, playing 3-on-3 three -three is very different than playing 5-on-5 five -five and just yeah. playing USA Basketball. How you guys got involved in this and what you're looking forward to with it? Um, yeah, well, I already was joking around that we were going to start, you know, having plays and play calls, whatever, <laughs> um, <laughs> yesterday. Um, but we've both, you know, we've both done USA, and I think we got a taste of that. But I think we're definitely just focusing on um, tomorrow and where we at, where we're at now. But um, I definitely think, you know, it's going to be a great experience for us. And we pra we practice three on three, four on four, two on two every day in practice um, here at Oregon. So I think we we're, we're kind of used to playing, you know, not five on five. But I think we're excited just for the opportunity opportunity to represent our country in that. Yeah, we're just. I think we're really excited, and it's going to be really fun. Howard? Uh, Ruthie, just in terms of the comparison to Bree Jones, uh, you guys do a lot of the same things, you know, it, not just scoring around the basket, but efficient, not a lot of wasted movement. Do you see a lot of your game in her, and are, are there any other people that you have patterned that your game after right around the post? Um, she's definitely a great player, and the way she finishes is something I'd like to continue to do as well. She's really composed and a strong player. We watch film on her, and just um, her ability to move people is something I definitely want to get better on, and her offensive rebounding is great, so I'm definitely going to try to uh, watch her and try to be a little more like her in those areas. <coughs> Mel? Mel Greenberg. He talked about starting out in the building blocks. 
in terms of getting solidified, how much does the Pac-12 schedule help you? Because like by comparison, UConn's non-conference schedule, maybe a little bit higher, is what you see night after night in the conference. Ruthie? Um, definitely playing against really top teams like Washington, UCLA, I think has um, helped us get here too. Um, we didn't take, okay, let me restart that. Um, playing against the top teams really helped us get here and I think helped us um, just prepare for Temple and Duke as well, just because we got to play against the top um, teams every day, I think. Sabrina, would you want to add um, Yeah, going off that, I mean, there's no days off really. There's no games off in the in the Pac-12. You, you, there's no night where, you know, where it's going to be easy to get a win. I mean, every win is is a hard-fought win. Um, so I think that definitely you know helps us late coming in late into March. Um, we're going to come play against you know t top teams in the country, and you know we pretty much do that every night um, in the Pac-12 back at home. So I think um, having such a tough schedule um, in the conference is going to help us um, now. Mallory. Um, adding off of that, uh, just the Pac-12 really prepares you for um, March and the NCAA tournament. Um, like they both said, uh, you never really take a night off. So um, it just prepares you really well. Do you have any other questions for uh, Doug? I know you guys are only home for a couple of days and exams are thrown in there, but there, I'm guessing a buzz around campus is what you and the men have done in March so far. I mean, it's a football school, but becoming a basketball school pretty quickly with the success you guys have had. And just what's it been like around campus and watching the men play last night, which Coach said you guys did? Uh, why don't you start, Mallory? Um, just around campus, I mean, you we have this academic center, and um, everybody in there talks about how well both the men's and women's have been playing. And it's really nice to see that the campus has been engaged in like watching the games and um, just seeing how well basketball has been doing at Oregon. So, Sabrina? Uh, yeah, going off of that, I mean, the buzz around campus has been great. You know, um, we always get, you know, told congratulations wherever wherever we're going. Um, and I think that's something great to see. You know, people are paying attention and um, seeing how much growth, you know, we've been doing. Um, and the men's team, you know, they've been great to us as well. We get tweets, you know, after every game, you know, congratulations. And that kind of goes both ways. You know, we congratulate them as well. We see them every day in the, in the training room and, and on the court. So I think it's great to see that relationship between – um, men's basketball and women's basketball, and then, of course, the rest of the university. Ruthie? Yeah, like they said, it's been great. It's really um, helpful for us to get congratulations from students and teachers, so it's really nice. Howard? Um, for for both, both of you, Ruthie and Sabrina, between the numbers, Ruthie, that you've been putting up uh, in March, and Sabrina, the numbers you're putting up, but also uh, the poise you showed the other night uh, when you were bumped in, uh, <laughs> during the Duke game, I'm, I'm curious whether you think that it's overstated how much veteran leadership matters compared to having teams where the freshmen are doing so much of the heavy lifting. Obviously, your opponent, too, with Destiny, who runs the team, uh, some of you have been friends with. Do you think that's overstated, or do you think, um, you, you think there's even an advantage, perhaps, in uh, having youth on your side? Ruthie, why don't you go first? I think it's highlighted all year that we were freshmen, but Coach Graves always says, like, we're not freshmen anymore after 10 games, 15 games in. We're just ball players. And I think focusing on that and knowing what we can do to help the team out is just what I try to focus on and not think about youth as much. Sabrina? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the leadership definitely helps because, you know, we've never, we've never experienced anything like this just coming into freshman year. Um, I know we were all kind of nervous. You know, where do we go to classes? Where do we – you know, when's practice, how early do we have to get to practice. Um, so definitely that side of um, that side of basketball and school has definitely helped us, you know, having some upperclassmen. But I think, you know, when, once the ball starts bouncing and when it's, once it's up in the air on that tip ball, you know, it's just basketball, regardless of if you're a senior, if you're a freshman, you know, no one's taking it easy on you because you are a freshman. And, you know, we're coming at everyone just as, you know, they're, they're basketball players. We don't care what grade they're in. Um, but I definitely think the experience helps. I mean, we have no idea what to expect coming in, you know, coming into, you know, March. We had no idea. Definitely Pac-12, we didn't know it was going to be, you know, that difficult, you know, playing against all those teams every single night that we that we played. Um, but I think that's that's just going to help us next year. I think we're going to be, you know, well prepared for the Pac-12 and definitely late into March. We have one more question. Time for one more if anybody wants it. Oh, okay. Thank you for joining us. Good luck. We'll see you tomorrow. The uh, next news conference will be uh, UConn beginning at 2.05.
Thanks, everybody.